good morning from the nature company um, we're going around the nursery this morning to see what needs to be done um, and I bet you're asking why the big woolly uh, we're at the beginning of autumn now and for us here it's around 17 or 19 degrees Celsius I uh, know you're probably laughing at me but for me that's chilly okay so what we're going to be looking at this morning and getting our hands dirty with is one of these it's Oncidium sphacillatum it's as you can see it was a multiple plant that's all been grown together as a clump been a little bit ignored in the nursery and now it's going to be time to revitalize the plant bring it back we can see it did a really good flowering this year in the southern hemisphere we get our flowering at Christmas time so that's the middle of summer and we can just see this whole big mat of roots and pseudobulbs so what we'll do be doing first is we'll clean up off all the dead matter so we can see where we're going to be aiming at and then we'll slowly remove individual pots apart this is not going to be a job for the faint-hearted it's going to take a little bit of front work to pull it apart they vigorous grows and i'm doing it now so the roots can set well for spring and then we can immediately get that initial growth coming out so that we can get flowers again in the middle of summer okay let's get ready to start taking this apart okay, i know i always go on about this but always remember cleanliness first we don't want to be spreading disease around our plants sanitize your equipment you're just going to be in cutting off the old flower spikes trying to get in as low as possible okay. and then we'll be taking out all these old leaves okay I'll save you the tedium of me doing this and we'll be back shortly okay, now that we have cleaned up some of the mess um, it's a little bit easier to see where to pull out some of the pots and which ones are growing into what already we see one has been pulled loose you see the overcrowding is just causing some of it to die but all the the new growth is still there that we're going to be removing off and repotting so already looking a bit better and now we just get into the, the actual grunt work of it all pulling it apart looks like the pots are going to come out off more easily than what the plants are going to come apart yeah there we go notice the mix we used with a lot of small stone at the, the bottom of the pot to allow for good drainage and aeration this also gives a weight to the pot so it's less likely to fall over when you get a mass of plant. Sometimes you can follow the growth of the pseudobulbs along their line and then try and pull them apart. Not so easily done with a single hand. But so what I'll do is pull this whole section off together that's originally coming from this pot over here and it's grown all the way out over there. See how where these splits are, all we're going to be doing is pulling that back. There we go, and dividing it off. we can see how decomposed the material in here was completely root bound we can break off a lot of the roots going into the pots because most of that is old growth and most of this root um, is dead already 
and all the new roots are coming off of the new growth. You see these nice white clean roots and all the dead roots off the back end. Okay, there we go. Having I divided up clump, we notice how many different pots there were that had all grown together. So now we'll just be taking the individual pieces, cleaning them up. Uh, some of the larger pieces we'll be keeping together um, to give us flowering sections for this next coming season and the rest will be just dividing up into smaller pieces to be back stock so they can be grown for the following year. Okay, so Oncidium sphacillatum is one of those wonderful orchids that grow incredibly easy especially here in the subtropics we have little to no trouble growing them very pest resistant and we can actually put them out in the full sun and get huge amounts of blooms out of them this is also known as the dancing ladies it comes from uh, central to southern america through venezuela mexico and generally one of the the higher uh, altitude growing orchids at about a uh, thousand plus meters above sea level so it does prefer to get a uh, colder period in the evenings to force the, the flowering buds generally the cold in winter that will force the initial flower bud at the base of the leaf and then it's only by by summertime that you actually get the full spark and the beauty of the flower here we've got some back bulbs that we're just going to pry off the plant that we can just pot up separately if we want to try and get some offshoots coming off of that that does relatively easily yeah we'll pot this up into a slightly larger pot some stones at the bottom this being such an easy orchid here in our climate that I don't have to do terribly much more to it than that you can actually just remove some of these old diseased leaves as well there we go. Yeah, we can already see the new shoots coming up from the base. So this is going to form a whole new pseudobulb with new leaves. And these are the ones that we're going to be looking at flowering in the new season. Again, a little trick to remove these leaves without damaging the plant. You open it out, open, and then you get that little V and you tear down the center. And then you can remove each section from each half find it removes off a lot easier without breaking off any little uh, budlets that are sitting down at the bottom okay even these little shoots if they do tend to be broken off when manhandling your plant and you've got something like this this too will grow fairly easily uh, often what i like to do is just remove a little bit of the the leaf volume this reduces the amount of transpiration that will take place giving the roots enough chance to draw up enough moisture to let the plant survive easily even something like this what i'm going to be doing is removing it from these two larger back bulbs that also i'll be planting up separately that will no doubt produce offshoots for me and this one i'll plant all together the back bulb will just give these smaller ones a chance to to really get going give it a good start as it draws out all the energy from the bulb always keep sterilizing better safe than sorry and with these having been neglected for so long we're going to be giving them a good treatment for fungus, for other pests, making sure that they're not spread anywhere else around the nursery. Okay, I'm just going to go through the balance of these orchids and then we'll start repotting and I'll show you how I do as we go along. Okay, so this is what our large mess of orchids now looks like 
you may have noticed I cleaned up I made such a mess I was embarrassed to show you <laughs> so we've divided these all up cleaned them up they're ready to be repotted so these are the pots that they all came out of you notice I've kept the stone this I'm going to be cleaning up and sterilizing and reusing the pots as well we sterilize and reuse we try and put as little waste back into the environment as we can we know we supposed to be the green industry but we do use a lot of plastic and other stuff so we try and limit what we can where we can okay now we'll just see what we can do repotting these and we'll show you how we do it as we go along going to be treating these with the, the fungicide and um, we've got this big thick mass of roots so what I'll do is I'll put this in a fungicidal bath. We'll show you how we do that. Um, this is just to make sure that everything gets well uh, soaked with the fungicide to make sure that any of the spores or any, any of the fungus that's in amongst those roots here will also be treated with the fungicide. Notice we've cleaned away as much of the dead material as possible to make sure that the fungicide and treatments can get in all the way around the plant just makes it easier and better for the plant and makes the treatment more effective Okay, now that we've washed it out and rinsed all the soap out, we're just making sure that there's nothing in the container that's going to reduce the efficacy of the fungicide. So now that we've done that, let's get to mixing the fungicide. Okay, now we have our tub filled with water. We have approximately 20 liters of water here. Um, I'm gonna be using the Fuminex, which is uh, triforine. Uh, this we're going to be adding into our water and then bathing our oncidiums into it. So with this triforine, what we need to do is we're adding in 12 and a half mils per 10 liters. So we'll put in 25 mils into this. We'll give this a quick stir. And now we'll be placing our orchid pieces in. One of the reasons that we're using the triforine is because it's effective against black spot. And I did notice that there are some black spots forming on this orchid. So I'd rather get this done properly and with the, the correct antifungal to make sure you're treating the problem that it actually has. So all we're going to be doing is putting each of them in and making sure they get soaked. <gasps> okay, there we go. Please note that these are hazardous chemical products that we're using. Notice I'm not actually putting my hands in the water. I'm using these tweezers to in so that my hands don't get wet 
Um, if you do get skin contact, best just to wash off immediately. Keep your hands clean and dry. And if need be, if you're in a closed in environment, make sure you've got a face mask on to protect yourself from fumes. So there we just go. We're going to be leaving these to soak for about five minutes and that should get all the way in through to the roots and everything. Okay, now that we've had these soaking, we're just going to be removing them, putting them on an aeration table. This is going to allow them to dry out. So here we go, all the orchid pieces drying off. Um, one of the reasons for the, the fungal bath is just for a spraying is because we had noticed those little black spots on them. So it, we're using it as a curative, not only just a preventative. So we need to make sure that they really well covered with the, the fungicide and it has managed to reach all parts of the plant and while we've got our antifungal bath there what we can do is those pots we're just going to be soaking those in as well so any fungal spores that have might have been on the on or in around the pots are also treated those also we'll just leave to soak and be used again at a later stage now that we've had these drying on the table and they mostly dry from the fungicide we're going to be potting up some of the bigger ones we're going to be potting up in this bigger size pot which have already been cleaned and sterilized i've got the washed and sterilized stone back in the bottom there we go so we're just filling it up to the bottom quarter that we fill up a stone it gives that extra weight to the pot so once we've got a large orchid in it, it's not going to be over that easily. So with these smaller pots, this is generally what I'll, I'll plant the starter pieces off on. And these will then grow up quite quickly to fill this pot that I'll then repot for next year. Um, the bigger ones that are, that should flower again this summer. I'll pot straight into a pot that's ready for it. I'm in a high rainfall area, so I'm gonna be using a nice coarse um, pine bark. This degrades relatively slowly, and it's going to be good enough to last because these are extremely fast growing orchids and they'll outgrow the pot within two years and by then you'll need to repot and change the media anyway so they work well together stones at the bottom to give that extra drainage it's the simplest thing we have a look at our orchid see how it's going to fit nicely into the pot we remember that oncidiums invariably grow in a direction so we plant it as close to the the starting point as close to the corner of the pot as possible so it gives it room to to grow outwards into the pot and then just basically filling around it making sure you get the roots down into the pot push in gently just to ensure that you're closing up any of the the large air gaps and just enough to to make sure that your plant is stable and not going to wobble around in the pot so that it will make it fall over and 
and there we go as easy as that and for the small piece also again we found the part where it started and the way it's growing push it into the corner and then fill in the bark if you're in lower humidity areas or with lower rainfall um, it could be a good idea to add the koya chunks or even some sphagnum moss in with your mix just to hold the moisture for longer yeah nice easy stable it's going to start growing this way across the pot filling up the pot and that will be ready in say two seasons to bloom and that's what we do in a nursery in a day